most of you know how to animate in Blender. And I'm here to show you that a very simple animation like this can easily transform into an animation like this. The last animation seems way more lively and professional. And all of this is done with just one single little technique. Animating in Blender is quite easy. Let's use this cube as an example. We want this cube to move from this position to another position. We just have to create a keyframe at the starting location. Select the model, click on I and insert the keyframe location. At the timeline, we can instantly see a yellow diamond. This little gem is our keyframe. We can also see an entire row of numbers. These numbers represent frames. And as you know, a video is made out of multiple frames. Now it's time for some promotion. If you have ever heard about Skillshare, um, you probably did, right? It's everywhere. You can learn whatever you want in every single time and you don't know what you want to learn, but you can still learn it if you want. Let's say you want to learn how to dance. Then of course, Skillshare has you covered. Um, I did not really follow the class as you could see, but there are many more classes on Skillshare. And I'm actually also a teacher on Skillshare. So if you want to learn, um, let's say my latest class, which is released online today, then you can create these animations. So if you're interested, then click on the link down below where you can get your first month for free. Let's go on to the video. So let's go to frame 60. Then move our cube around the X axis and click on the I again to insert the second keyframe at this location. Our animation is not going to be any longer than 60 frames. So let's change the end from 250 to 60. So now we have two keyframes. And if we play the animation with pressing the play button in a timeline or pressing space, you can see that the cube is moving from location A to location B. And this is a very nice and smooth animation. But with one click, you can change this animation drastically. All the animations that you can see right now are done with the exact same keyframes. So this shows how versatile we can make our animations. Let me show you how we can do this. Let's drag the timeline up and change the editor type to graph editor. The keyframes in this editor type are represented as black dots, which become orange when you select them. And each keyframe has handles, as you can see. Also, in between these keyframes are the curves that we talked about. In this graph editor, we can edit these curves to create the different animations. Let me first show you how to navigate through this editor. You can press and hold the middle mouse button, then drag around your cursor to pan around in your scene. You can scroll your scroll wheel to zoom in or zoom out. And in certain cases, you will see that you can barely see the curves. In these cases, you can scale view. This you do with control and then pressing the middle mouse button and of course dragging your mouse up and down. So how do we change this animation? Well, very easy. You just have to select one of your keyframes and start playing around with these curves. So you can scale this one up or rotate it and you can instantly see changes happening to your cube. So let's play this and you can see that now it acts differently. That is a very easy and simple way to just change this. But if you click on N or drag this little arrow out, you can see that we have some more options. We can change the interpolation here, which you can also do by pressing T. The interpolation can be constant, linear or Bezier. Bezier often creates the most smooth results, but easing can also be quite handy to use. So if we select our first curve here, then go to interpolation and change this to exponential, you can instantly see this whole curve changing. Then as easing, you also have some different methods. We have easing in, we have easing out, we have automatic easing. And all of these will of course impact this curve. But how do we choose which curve to use? Of course you have your artistic freedom. 
But if we take a quick look at all the shapes, you might get a better understanding on how to use them. A normal Bezier curve moves slow in the beginning, speeds up in the middle of the animation and slows down at the end. This is why Bezier curves are the most powerful tool to create nice and smooth animations in between multiple keyframes. A linear interpolation has a constant speed, which makes it very handy for certain looping animations. Or maybe even machinery, which has a constant speed. If we take a look at different easing types, you can see that we can choose between a slow beginning and speeding up later on. This makes me instantly think about a car driving off. Or the total opposite, where we start quick in the animation, but slow down in the end. Think maybe about something falling in the water. And there are of course dynamic effects which kind of speak for themselves. Think about bouncing balls, or maybe something elastic, like a bow and arrow. So please use the graph editor when you're animating. And also, if you have you know, animated anything, send it to me on uh, Instagram. I will also leave a link down in the description below. And um, yeah, please like, subscribe to this channel. It will help me a lot. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.